Greetings, my name is Daniel Bo Chen Tan, and I'm going to introduce you to our work in ICAD 2022, Qubit Mapping for Reconfigurable Atom Arrays. Reconfigurable Atom Array is a very uh, promising platform for, for computing, because in general, neutral atom arrays can have a lot of qubits, actually more than 250 demonstrated by this work. And uh, another uh, great advantage is uh, the sense of reconfigurability we're going to see. This is a film contained in this uh, very paper introducing this architecture. And uh, here the physicists are trying to implement some circuits related to uh, an error correction code called Toric code. In this film, you can see this uh, little dot. Uh, each one of them is, a, uh, is an atom and uh, each atom encodes one qubit. Also, you can see that we have the red circles on eight pairs of uh, these qubits. So those just uh, means that they are close enough so that if we illuminate them with red laser, these pairs are going to execute CZ gate. So as you can see, a subset of the qubits are moving throughout the computation. And then we have different pairs that are close enough. And so that we can have different pairs going through uh, the CZ gates. Specifically, if you notice um, the eight qubits uh, move to the upper right corner in the end, they are moving and the other qubits are um, resting throughout the computation. Movable optical traps are called AOD traps, acoustic optical deflector. So the eight qubits uh, at the right up corner, they are in AOD traps. And uh, the rest of the qubits are in SLM traps, which are stationary. SLM stands for a spatial light out modulator. There are a few other examples in this uh, work introducing the architecture. Uh, they're all related to quantum error correction and the circuits are generated by some graph that are still intuitive to human. So our problem is that can this architecture ac execute any circuit? This circuit may not be induced by some graph intuitive to human so that you don't see a clear way of how do you perform the movements. Specifically, uh, what is the completion problem? If we zoom into that uh, circuit and if we label the qubits, we can see that um, what's um, what's important is this list of two qubit gates we need to execute. So we have Q2, Q0, Q2, Q2, Q3, Q3, Q4, Q4, Q5. And uh, these qubits like Q2 are also connected to other qubits that are not shown in this part of the graph. Um, and for the other single qubit gates, actually, we have individual addressability. So that means we can execute any, um, any single qubit gate on any atom or qubit uh, at, any time, at any time we want. So what we really need to care about is this list of two qubit gates. So the first issue is placing. Uh, where are these qubits initially? Uh, so this is the initial configuration in that view. And uh, the locations of the six qubits are uh, indicated by the arrows. Also, we need to choose to which trap we, we, we put them, AOD or SLM. The second part is routing. How do we perform the movements? We can perform this uh, linear motion, but in 2D plane um, on these AOD traps. And the third issue is scheduling of the gates because uh, the gates can only be executed when the correct uh, qubit pairs are close. So layout synthesis or qubit mapping, uh, these terms are in, used interchangeably in the uh, literature, um, just means that we need to give this um, answer to all these questions. So now it's uh, worthwhile to compare this architecture with some existing uh, fixed architecture, uh, like Sycamore architecture by Google. So, um, this is what's called a coupling graph, and it is the information we need from the device uh, for uh, to perform layout synthesis or qubit mapping. So here, each vertex is a quantum register that can encode one qubit, and each edge is a coupler for two qubit gates. So only when the quantum registers are connected by coupler, we can we um, entangle them with the, the two qubit gate. And we have individual control of two qubit gates. We can we only execute the two qubit gates we want. Um, there's no um, inherent um, 
like strong correlation between like the, these uh, couplers, we can control them individually. So placing is from program qubits or qubits in the quantum circuit to one of the quantum register. Like we can place two um, qubits here and the routing is done by a kind of gate called swap gate. The effect of swap gate is that it will um, exchange the content of these two quantum registers. So then um, the program qubits is mapped to different registers after the swap gate. Uh, and this swap gate is in general not a cheap gate. It may take three entanglement to qubit gates to execute. And that will hurt the uh, fidelity of the circuit in general. We have a previous work called OSC in, on this problem for fixed architecture. So now for the RA architecture, um, each vertex is an atom which encode one qubit. So that is very similar. And each edge, you can see that we don't have solid lines anymore. Here, we only have dashes. So that, that means a potential coupling for two qubit gates because um, the um, whether two qubits are coupled depends on their distance. Uh, and that depends on where do you have the AOD atoms at this moment. Um, so all of the edges are um, potential um, coupling. Because we can move the AODs anywhere um, as a whole, so we can entangle any AOD atom with any SLM atom. So that means we can have these star subgraphs from each LD atom, which is like red points here to all the SLM atoms. We are, we're only showing one for clarity. Um, and uh, between the AOD atoms, they can have uh, a potential coupling between uh, the adjacent columns or rows. So they are con uh, additionally connecting this to the grid. Um, but here, the downside is that we only have global control of the two qubit gates. Uh, once we turn on the record laser, all the pairs are closed, will have the two qubit gate. We cannot say, oh, we don't want this pair actually. Can we turn it off? No, we cannot have individual control. And the placing is from atom to a specific location um, in the 2D plane, and routing is done by the AOD movements. And this work is called OSCAR, which is an extension of OSC. So all of this motion seems very continuous. And as a computer science, we uh, would like to discretize the problem first so that we they can um, this problem can be expressed in a um, language of state and transition. So if you think about it, the time domain is naturally discretized because we have this uh, stages where we turn on the Rackberg laser. And because it's a global control, uh, it is uh, naturally a uh, discretization of the time. Uh, and between these stages, because we only have this uh, linear movements of the AOD atoms, they can be easily interpolated um, for a specific moment between stages. So overall, time domain is discretized. For um, discretizing the space domain, there is actually also a fundamental reason. So that is because we need to keep the atoms at a sufficient separation. Uh, it's got 2.5 RB, and RB is this constant called the uh, Rydberg range. So um, if we don't want any side effect between two qubits, we need them to be this far away. So that naturally brings some sparsity into the uh, space domain. So that's why we need to discret That's why we can discretize uh, this problem. Um, so to do that, uh, we actually discretize the space domain to interaction sites. So these are well um, sufficiently separated areas uh, in the 2D plane. So notice that the, the graph here is not strictly proportional. So in each of these interaction sites, we can have 0, 1 SLM per uh, atom. Um, so that's because we don't want two SLM at, uh, here, and then maybe compiler will choose to put two qubits, two qubits there, and then um, they will be interacting at every stage, which is not ideal. And uh, the AOD atoms can move between the sites. So for example, this AOD atom is at site x equal to one and y equals to zero right now. And because they can move, there can be multiple AOD columns and rows um, at the same interaction site. We call that 
if um, we call that phenomena stacking of AOD rows and columns. And uh, of course, there is a maximum number of how you, how many rows or columns you can stack. And uh, in the paper, we using this running example, which is a part of QA circuit uh, induced by this graph. Uh, in the end, we can generate solutions very similar to uh, the spirit of the movie I showed in the beginning. So we have uh, the qubits, the, the red ones are in AOD, the blue ones are in SLM, and this green patches means there is a two qubit gate on them. And you can see the AOD um, atoms are moving in whole rows and columns. So in comparison, um, so executing this circuit needs three swaps on Sycamore, but none is required on RA. Uh, we, in the formulation, we set some variables um, and some constraints, but I'm not going to have time to talk over all of them. So if you're interested, you're welcome to check out our paper. To perform the optimization, uh, first, our objective is the number of stages with the number of times we turn on the record laser, because this is, from a physics point of view, the main error source. And uh, we can lower bound the number of stages by just analyzing the program. Um, and then we put all of these variables and constraints into an SMT model uh, and uh, give that model to SMT solver. It will output a solution if it is satisfiable or it will set unset. So if it's unset, maybe it's because the number of stages we give it is too low. So we can perform uh, optimization um, using this, uh, is this property. By the way, we, uh, we open source the project with this link. So we first create a model that is proportional to T0, the, uh, um, the lower bound for stages. And then we query the SMT solver whether that model is satisfiable or not. If it's satisfied, we found a solution, great. Um, and if it's not, then we will create a model that is proportional to T plus one, which is, is a larger number of stages. And then we do again until we find an optimal solution. So the result of this is that we have a great reduction in the number of uh, two gates we need. Um, so for QA22, we have uh, 5.7x less gates than uh, Sycamore plus TCAD, which represents the previous leading experiment effort. And if we ask, uh, if we appro uh, estimate the fidelity of the circuit, um, you can see that there's a 14.4x gap. And um, so, but that's partly also because of the super long um, coherence time of this uh, atom array. If we filter that part out, the pure effect of reconfigurability is about 2x, but it's still very large. And if we make some projections onto this fidelity figure, um, so here the the two series, uh, the, the two series uh, in the last slide are also shown as a solid lines, and uh, the dash line is uh, RAA, but with F two equals to ninety nine point four, which is the current two gigabit fidelity of uh, Sycamore, um, then it's on par with this blue star theory, which is Sycamore plus CCAT, but with ninety nine point nine. F2 and 100 times of its current uh, coherence time. So this would be uh, really hard to achieve um, for superconducting circuits. For future directions, we would like to um, first uh, handle this atom transfer capability better. So that just means we are capable of transferring qubits between AOD and SLM. We have some initial support for this. Um, by expanding this uh, AI type of variable to be time dependent, but it's still restrictive than what's possible. The second direction is developing heuristics since we are getting some sense of uh, what the solutions should look like. Um, also because SMT models takes exponential time to solve in the worst case. Um, so these heuristics are for the AOD movements, but also another way is that we can uh, develop some higher order heuristic for performing atom transfer and then still use OSCARA uh, as is for the small cases to perform the movements. And uh, the, this optimal compiler will also be valuable for architecture design. Thank you very much.
these are some references.